How you doing? This is Coach Carlo, and what we're going to be doing is discussing one of Neville Goddard's techniques called Enter the Dream Technique. And so what we're going to do is go to a PowerPoint presentation, and we're going to discuss entering the dream. Today's technique, as I stated before, we're going to be talking about entering the dream. And this is a wonderful technique, but a lot of times people say, well, you know, listen, when I try to enter the dream, I fall asleep and so forth. So what we're going to do is give you some tools that will allow you to enter into the dream and begin manifesting the life that you desire. So Neville says this, when you go into your imagination, make sure that you are actually performing the action. Hear the words, touch the object, or smell the aroma in your self-conceived drama. What do you do in your imagination is not merely a daydreaming, which you see an event in your mind's eye. You must enter into the dream as if you're actually there. This is the key. So when you're sitting back and you're relaxing, Neville says, listen, don't just see the dream as it were from the stage or as you're watching a movie or if you're watching a play. He says, you must become the actor on the stage in the movie, in the drama. And being the actor, you're seeing yourself performing what it is that you desire to do. So if you desire to take a trip, feel yourself walking on that beach. Feel yourself, you know, feeling the cool breeze blowing on your face. Feel yourself as already being in the place that you want to be. We talked about a technique last time, and it was, you know, overhearing someone, you know, hearing other people talk about you. You can, as you're entering into the dream, you can hear other people talking about you and saying how happy they are that you're successful. So when you go into your imagination, he says, be sure that you're actually performing the event. Now, why is this important? Merely this, that subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between what you're imagining with feelings and being in the state and sensationalizing the event and what you're actually experiencing in what we call reality or the 3D. So Neville said it's important that you use your hearing, that you take the actions, that you're touching objects, that you're smelling, you using all of your five senses, you're imagining as if it's actually taking place in your reality. Now let's go on. He says, you must make the then, now, and the there, here. What does that mean? You go into the future, and the future becomes now. You go to where it is that you want to be. If you're in, in my case, I'm in Georgia. So if I wanted to go to New York, I would find myself in New York right now experiencing what I would do if I had lived in New York. You know, you say, well, Coach, well, what does somebody do that's never been to New York? We have this wonderful tool called the Internet. And there's no place that you can't go in the world that you can go and watch a video. You can watch a video anywhere in the world and begin seeing yourself in that place. You can watch a video of somebody being a multimillionaire and shopping and experiencing all these things. We don't even have to fully use our imagination now because we have so many mental tools available to us. Once you get that mental picture solidified in your mind, then it can become yours. It says that, you know, the grandfather saw himself standing on an empty lot. He imagined himself being on that empty lot and seeing himself being a multi-millionaire even before the millions had taken place. So two or three generations were actually experiencing what the grandfather had experienced because he first saw it in his mind's eye. But what he did was he experienced it in his mind first. As Mr. Linda will often say, it's only new as ideal, but when it is manifested into your reality, that's secondhand. First cause is always mine. So as first cause is being mine, you have to see or imagine in your mind's eye where it is that you want to be and see it currently as your reality when you're using this technique. When you're using the dream technique, it's real to you at that moment. And you say, well, coach, why does it have to be real at that moment? It has to be real to you because subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between what's imagined with feeling and being in the right proper state and what you're actually experiencing. So he says, you must actually enter into the dream. He says this, you must make the then now and make the there here. To make this perfectly clear, imagine that you would experience driving a new car after you have achieved your goal. 
in that case, you would not merely see a new car in your mind's eye, you must actually enter into the dream. Now, this is actually how I manifested my car. When I was deciding on the kind of car I wanted to manifest into my life, I happened to be driving around in my old car and I saw something that appeared to be this beautiful spaceship. <laughs> it was a car, but it was just so well made. It was so beautiful. And I began to see that as my car. When I was driving my old car, you know, and people look at my old car, I didn't sense my old car. I sensed myself driving in that new car. That new car had become new and real to me. It wasn't a car that I was going to get. I was already driving it, even though I was driving in my current car at that time, my old car. So this is the same thing that we did when we, uh, before we moved into our home, you know, even before entering into relationships, before entering into my relationship, I saw myself being in my relationship before that relationship had taken place. Feel yourself seated behind the steering wheel. Smell the newness of the interior. Feel yourself enjoying a comfortable ride. Feel the happiness that you would have after you accomplished your dream. This comes from Neville Goddard's consciousness. And I believe that consciousness is the only reality, but look up Neville Goddard's consciousness for more information on that particular talk. Let's move forward. Enter the dream technique. You can sit quietly and enter into a gorgeous dream. If it's shadowy, if you're not in it, pursue it until you enter it, and it will become the only reality. Live in the state of your fulfilled desire now. Know that in a way unknown, and unnoticed by you, it will erupt and become an objective fact. What is he saying? He says, listen, you have to begin getting into the state of this thing that you desire as being real. Many people call that make-believe, they call it fantasy, they call it pretend. It doesn't matter what you call it, but if you learn how to do this, this is where the millionaires become millionaires and billionaires. This is why the Olympic athletes all over the world use these techniques. This is why actors and actresses use these techniques. This is why business moguls become business moguls. Before they were anybody, before, you know, you look at great uh, warriors of the past, you look at Abraham Lincoln, who had lost so many uh, election races, you know, he lost race after race until he won the biggest race of his life, and that was president of the United States. But he saw it in his mind's I first. He lived it until it became his reality. And this is what you must do. If you're really serious about manifesting, you can't start trying to manifest and the thing that you're trying to manifest doesn't happen over a day or two. You say, well, this stuff doesn't work. And you go back to your old way of thinking. The only thing that you're going to get there is more of your old way of thinking. If you want to be a millionaire, if you want to be in a loving relationship, if you want better health, you have to begin living from don't look at where you're at currently. Don't look at how you feel currently. Don't get stuck there. And understand this. You're not going to know how the manifestation is going to come about. It could come by some way of some new medication if it's a health issue. It could come by some way of a surgery. It could come naturally by way of your body. Yours is not to determine the how. You do everything you can to make sure that you get healthy. But in the end, you're not going to know how divine intelligence is going to bring this about. So God says that my ways are not your ways. They're far higher than your ways. They're beyond finding out. So with that being said, yours is to get into the state and begin living from the place of somebody who's more abundant, somebody who's healthy, somebody who's in a loving relationship. You become more loving. You begin doing what you need to do by way of your health. You become as it were, more loving in your interactions with people. You become more open if you're somebody that's closed so that you can meet new people. You become the person that you need to be and watch how life unfolds and presents to you bigger, better, more than you can ask, think, and or imagine. Neville lastly says, listen, I urge you to dream nobly. Although your dream may seem impossible, everybody that's li living outstanding lives today started off with something that was seemingly impossible. We look at them now and we look at how seemingly great they are. And we think that they're, they have some tools or some skill sets that we don't have. 
and it's just not so. We're told in scripture that God is no respecter of person and what he's done for one person. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to make you an Elon Musk, but what he can do is make you wealthy beyond your imagination. He can make you healthy beyond your imagination. He can give you a loving relationship beyond your imagination. So you begin living as if it's presently, currently your reality. He says, make then, now, and there, here, make it happening in your reality right now. You know, Jesus says, you know, don't say that the harvest is four months out. He says the time of harvest is now. The time of harvest always begins in one's imagination. So you begin feeling consciously as if it's real. So although your dream may seem impossible, invite it into your consciousness by feeling it real. Let me say it again. Invite it into your consciousness. Accept it as a possibility. Just say that it's possible. Now, when you begin operating from it's possible, begin feeling it real. He says, wear this feeling as if you would a suit of clothes and persist until the feeling takes on a tone of reality. Do that, and in a way, no one knows your desire will appear as an eruption of your conscious thought. And that's in Living the Answer Now. That in the previous quote was from Living the Answer Now. So what are we saying? You got to clothe yourself. You got to become, see, right now you believe that you're somebody. And when I say somebody, you believe that you're a particular person. You believe that who you are right now is fixed. And because you believe that that person is fixed, you don't see a possibility of change. But for the person they could say to themselves, you know what, I believe that I can run a business, I can start a business that can create multiple millions of dollars. I can be in a loving relationship where somebody will love me for me. I can have better health. I can begin to perform better. I can take, you know, the ailments that I have and begin to reverse them and see my life taking a different course. You know, until we can clothe ourselves in being our best self now and begin living from our best self, no matter what our apparent limitations are, if we can begin living from our best self now, what life is going to do is begin to mirror what you've imagined. And it goes back to a story I'll tell in closing. There was this king and his body was very disformed, you know, and so um, he got an idea of what he wanted. He had a sculptor come and he had the sculptor create a image of him that was perfect. His ideal self where he was straight, that his body wasn't twisted. And day after day, he began to imagine that he was that sculptor. And little by little, unbeknownst to himself, his body straightened out. And pretty soon he was that beautiful sculptor that he had looked at all along. What image are you holding in your mind's eye about yourself? When you begin to change that image in your mind's eye about who you are, we're trying to change the world without, and we're trying to image everyone else around us being better, but we haven't imagined for ourselves to be better. And so we say, well, this stuff doesn't work. Well, first and foremost, start with yourself, creators. Start changing, transforming, rearranging your own mindset and begin seeing how the principles work for you. It's like Bucky Fowler said, he said, I made my life an experiment. Allow your life to be an experiment of greatness, whatever greatness looks like to you, bigger, better, more, whatever your life looks like in a better format. Begin seeing yourself being the actor in the play, not on the stage, but in the play, living out that new sculpture of yourself, that new work of art of yourself, and begin living from that new work of art and watch how the world around you begins to acquiesce. Remember this, creators, that only you can create your perfect world. Not God, not man. Only you can create your perfect world. This is Coach Carlos saying, have a great and abundant day. This is Coach Carlos, and again, as we close uh, this particular Neville technique, as you live the dream as though it's real, and you begin using the dream technique, what you're going to discover is that your world without will begin to reflect, mirror what you've imagined in your dream. Because like I stated, the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between 
what you're imagining with feelings and what's actually taking place in your physical world. So as you begin to practice these techniques, watch how your life is transformed. And it begins starting with yourself, creators. Don't go and try the big things of changing everybody else around you. Start with yourself. And as you change, you'll discover your world will also change. This is Coach DeCarlo saying have a great and abundant day.